welcome to the Modern Day Warrior. Today we have co-founder Ng Wei Ling of Lean Metrics, an SEO and inbound marketing agency. He helps organizations get to the top of the search engine, both in China, Indonesia, and Singapore are some of his clients. He actually knows what he's doing because he himself has a business called Bottles of Joy, number one for online wine and champagne delivery here in Singapore. Welcome. Thank you very much. So just to start off, who are you, who do you help, and how do you do it? I started um, Lean Metrics and Bottles of Joy um, a little bit over two years ago. Uh, first, first up was Bottles of Joy. Um, I enjoy my wine and um, I became friends, uh, good friends with a lady who is a local wine, wine seller. And um, I would try to help her set up a website, um, but um, there were a lot of challenges with that, uh, not least because our IT was tied up all in a bundle, there were a lot of issues. With her support, I set up a separate wine website, which I ran, and uh, I thought, thought of it at first as an experiment, but you know, one thing led to another. I found a way to actually um, get customers in, get orders in, and I thought that was really, that was really fun time. Uh, it was ex super exciting. Um, friends of mine working in startups saw that, hey, you know, wow, really, you're you know, starting to get this uh, traction. Could you also do it for me? And I started taking on these freelance gigs. Over time, I found that, hey, you know what? Um, I think I can do this for a living. So I decided to also uh, set up a separate company, um, doing digital marketing consulting, you know, and they both went hand in hand. And that kind of brought me to where I am today. You told me that right after graduation, you started off with six, only $600 in your pocket, setting up your own website, helping create custom tailored suits for individuals in Singapore. And today, now you run an organization that does business in multiple countries. Can you share a little bit more about your journey and what kind of um, challenges you faced? Um, so in 2009, I graduated from NUS. Uh, and um, at that time, um, there was a recession going on, um, so I'm Malaysian, um, and it was really difficult for um, non-Singaporean fresh graduates to find a job. In, against this backdrop, I thought, hey, you know what, um, why don't I try starting my own online business? I mean, uh, I've read all about it, I was really into it, um, partly through an experience in uh, NUS, so I pulled together my savings, you know, took a bunch of it to build a website, which cost, you know, through a friend, cost me $600, and to reduce the rest of it to support myself. But, you know, in order to save money, um, I put up myself at uh, a friend's office, uh, his startup office. So I slept in the office. Uh, there was a cat. The cat would come scratch me at night. Um, tried all sorts of stuff to get uh, sales and orders. This chapter of it even took me to um, small town in China called Sisi, uh, very classically beautiful. I went there because I thought there was a, there was a um, fabric market and I thought, all right, I'm going to source my own fabric. I'm going to get, you know, all my fabrics. I'm going to get the tailors to make it. It's going to be amazing. And then I went there and it was, everything was screwed up. Despite all that, you know, I got through my adventure. I got, I got a bunch of suits made, um, came back to Singapore, uh, delivered them. All in all, it's pretty clear that this company was uh, not going to be profitable to me. Um, but it was great learning experience. Um, I learned a lot about uh, my appetite for pain, what it takes to, to succeed as an entrepreneur, or at least what you have to put up with, not even to the point where you succeed, but what you have to put up with. And I think um, over time, I learned more and more about that. What kind of skill sets helped you go through that journey when you first started off? working in a you know, random place in China, sleeping on a wooden cot, and then making yourself through startups into your own agency and consultancy. I love learning. And I think um, at least uh, for the work that I do, uh, it's indispensable. You have to keep learning because uh, the landscape for startup marketing um, or even just technology in general is evolving so quickly. I mean, once upon a time, you know, you know Yahoo was the biggest search engine in the world, and now it's selling, you know, <laughs> breaking up in pieces and getting sold. So I think uh, it goes to show that you can't stop learning, you can't stop adapting, and uh, that for me, I, th I think, really carried me through my tough times and 
taught me enough to uh, give people enough trust in me to say I'd like to like you to do some work for me. Yeah. So if I understood that correctly. Uh, to summarize, is more of keeping yourself self-manage yourself to continuously learn, continually push the envelope, and expand your own technical as well as other forms of skill sets. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I, I feel that you're going a little bit in the direction of talking about uh, self-discipline, but um, I want to say that I'm really lucky. Uh, learning for me is uh, a joy, so I don't, I don't feel you know, pressurized to learn. I do think that everybody has to do so, and if you, know, there are, you find it uh, difficult to just read off a book, you, de you do need to find a way to um, make learning enjoyable and acceptable so that you can um, keep pace with your own aspirations. It sounds like trying to design learning for yourself in a way that you would naturally pick it up, naturally retain it, and naturally apply it. Do you have any specific example that you can uh, share about that where maybe you thought it was something important to learn but you, you had to figure out how to motivate or discipline or make yourself enjoy that learning process? Uh, let me tell you a story about Bottles of Joy. So, um, when I first started it, I thought, wow, it's a terrific idea. You know, the, uh, there's this awesome uh, platform called Shopify, you know, they just let you put your products there, you pay a small monthly fee, and then you can, the orders will just roll in. And then you set it up, and then it doesn't. And then you go, wow, what happened there? Uh, what happened for me was, um, I, me and my partner, um, who started Balls of Joy, we set aside $2,000 um, set for ad budget and we thought, hey, you know what, uh, you know, we're on some ads, we've been doing this for a while, I think we can, we, we can manage it. So we set up the ad campaigns, we set up a uh, customized uh, landing page, we thought we got all set. And then um, we switched on the tab, enable the campaigns, and then, wow, the visits kept coming in, lots and lots of visits, uh, but nobody was buying anything. <laughs> Awful! It was really terrible. We blew over a thousand dollars. I think uh, eventually the uh, total bill came close to two thousand, but not quite. Uh, before realizing, okay, it's really not working. Uh, so we started looking for different things. Uh, we quickly pivoted to writing a lot of blog posts and then putting them in newsletters, getting people to subscribe, and we kept at that for quite a few, quite a number of weeks, before realizing that, you know what, people will read our content, but also they weren't really buying. At that point, we were starting to get really, really stressed. Like, okay, uh, nobody's buying. What are we gonna do? You know, we, we we did YouTube videos. There's still YouTube videos of me talking about wine that nobody should ever see. Um, but uh, that was a very good experience. Um, the blogging, though, eventually uh, led to a great epiphany. So, one day out of the blue, we, you know, we were blogging and blogging and doing YouTube videos and sending newsletters to everyone and checking Google Analytics, refresh, 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 nothing was coming, and one day you get an order, and you're like, wow, we got an order, that's amazing. Wow, this newsletter thing must be working. And then the next day you get another order. It's like, whoa, wait a minute, this order, I don't even recognize this name, this person never signed up for a newsletter. And then over time you get savvy, you start digging into analytics more and find that, oh, SEO. I think that was the time that we truly dis uh, felt that, you know, um, online marketing, it can work in more than one way. It doesn't just have to be ads, it doesn't just have to be um, newsletters. Um, we discovered that, well, you know, just people searching on Google actually work. That, that was a very powerful realization because um, it really gave me and my partner confidence that, whew, we can really make this work. Uh, we'll be okay, we'll be all right. Because up to that point, um, you know, I. I was doing that full time. It was uh, I was get, getting really stressed out, you know, um, do, working from home, uh, not knowing, um, in you know what's going to happen in a few months if nothing nothing comes through. So it's massive relief. You can't can't really say <laughs> how much it was a relief. Um, but then when it did, we we tried to learn, you know, get the lessons from it. Try to figure out what did we do, trace back our steps, and um, slowly try to build on the parts that work, and. That was great, yeah. Obviously you had some down points there and you sound, it sounded like it was very stressful. A lot of entrepreneurs get to that space where they don't know if they can continue on. Was there something there that, uh, something you did, some sort of skill set, some sort of 
mindset or something that helped you get through that? It really helped that um, I had friends, good friends around me, uh, you know, good close family uh, who would support me emotionally, um, who could listen to me um, share what was uh, really, really bothering me. Having them as you know uh, my support, I could um, try to find, try to think of ways to work around the problem. When you encounter a problem, um, you don't have to become too invested in one particular solution. So um, you can think of it as um, iterative learning, you know, sort of like lean startup methodology. You try out one solution, you know, if it doesn't work, uh, catch yourself before you, you know, go too deep into the rabbit hole and say, you know what, I tried it a little bit, it didn't seem like it was gonna work, let's try something adjacent and work from there. So uh, with that, you know, I didn't, didn't let myself become too discouraged by things that didn't work, I didn't try not to uh, get too deep in something that um, failure becomes devastating. Because you know, there's so many things to try, right? We don't have to believe that uh, social media is the only way that you will ever make this work, or um, paid ads, uh, search ads will, must be the holy grail. So you're probably approached by a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs. Um, you know, just from your experience of what, what you see and what you've you know, gone through yourself, what kind of skill sets do you think that are lacking or underdeveloped for these entrepreneurs before they start their journey? I, I do meet um, budding entrepreneurs every now and then. There, there are all kinds of people. Like, you know, they're like with really smart kinds, like technically accomplished. Uh, and then there's the, uh, you know, the, the archetypal salesman who can sell ice to an Eskimo. It is extremely difficult um, to talk about giving generic advice to you know, a broad group of people. Um, there's this uh, quote uh, from uh, Leo Tolstoy, a famous Russian author that says, you know, all happy families are the same, but all miserable families are miserable in their own unique way. It seems that it's something you could also apply to individual people. The best thing they can do is to at least try, you know? pick up the courage to try and know when to adjust your situation, to pivot. Um, yeah, I think that would be a reasonable piece of advice to give. So it sounds like, you know, we know that the world's complex. And there are a lot of different factors that can come in, but the guys who succeed in, in reality are the ones who can adapt, right? Understand the situation, grow and develop, and actually not uh, become self-defeated. I agree, I think so. It's a tough world out there, so you, know, you shouldn't be too hard on yourself. Mm. Of reflecting on that skill set about being able to self-manage and make sure that you don't fall in that rabbit hole, because a lot of entrepreneurs do, what potential th actions, three actions perhaps, people can do today to start developing that, uh, that skill set of self-management? In order to get into that, I need to uh, introduce um, something that works for me, um, but it's uh, only ten, it's, it's totally unrelated to entrepreneurship. Um, I have a little bit of a spiritual side and um, with that um, it comes from my Buddhist upbringing. Um, there's this idea about being uh, self-aware, um, you know, reflecting upon the self and I think that informed a lot of how I carry out my work. Um, I feel like I can endure more because I, I'm aware of what I'm doing, um, I feel like I can Mm, take stock of where I am, you know, not be, be too caught up in the emotion of um, success or failure. Um, so I think that that is something uh, people can actually develop and I think would be useful for people to know uh, that you can have a degree of self-awareness, uh, have uh, self-reflection, and it's just not something that you have to be born with in order to benefit from. That's what I want to share with people. Uh, and before we you know, close up for the night, uh, can I ask you, you know, one tip to those who are watching, the Monday Warrior wants to be the smashing entrepreneur and getting out there and you know, make that next unicorn or even fall on their face trying to do that. Any, any last words or tips you want to share with them uh, before we close off? Do it now. <laughs> Thanks very much, uh, Wei Ling.